The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is sponsored by Two Fat Lardies, Geek Nation Tours, and by the most generous donations of you, the listener. Thank you to everybody for your support. The Meeples and Miniatures podcast, episode 232, Imperial Assault, with hosts Neil Shook, Mike Hobbs, and Mike Whittaker. This show was recorded on the 4th of October 2017. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meeples and Miniatures Podcast. My name is Neil Shuck and on this show I am joined once again by the Welsh Wizard himself. It is Mr Hobbs. Hello, sir. Hello, Neil. Hello, Mike. Hello, Meeps. How are we, sir, on this on on this fine October evening? We? Well, the, the, the royal we is, is very well, thank you. Good. Uh, yes, good, glad to hear. And of course, uh, as well as Mr. Hobbs, uh, as Mr. Hobbs has hinted, we all, we will have our resident troubadour. It is Mr. Michael Whittaker. Hello, sir. How do you notice it wasn't me who spoiled me being here this time? For a change. I thought I'd jump in early. <laughs> yes. How are you, sir? How is your cake? Uh, I am cakeless. Oh. Sad. Not, not that, that then, then I've been kind of busy this week doing non non gamey things. So, uh, indeed, right, okay. So, so here we all are. Here we all are again, back together. And this time we have time to talk. There was somebody who tweeted to me and did uh, and did happen to mention there was too much Jake on last show. Is I don't that know. Possible? Is, can, <laughs> can you ever have too much Jake? Apparent, uh, yeah. uh, according to <laughs> acor- according to one of our listeners. Apparently so, but yeah, yes, yes, so, yeah. So we are Jakeless this week, as some people may may be pleased to hear. Which means that I, I don't know whether it was just a comment on the fact that because we had so much Jake last week, we had so little of us. Must could be, be. could yeah. be, could be. We did, we did, we did sort of hurry along the us. We did, we did. Admittedly, and as part of that, we were we were completely remiss in commenting on current events and uh you know the current uh you know the current argument argument uh yeah well discussion suppose, discussion, uh, discussion. No, an argument would imply there were two sides and both of them had the potential to be right we all know this is not the case so ah yes Ooh. thank you thank you mr Whitaker, for clarifying the situation yes but it, it, it does kind of depend on which one of the many um, discussion points we are talking about because on some of them he is right on others he's wrong oh, oh, come on not okay so if you ha- if you don't know do not have a clue what we are talking about uh, you need to go and listen to episode 25 of the veteran wargamer podcast mr arnold i better go and do that then haven't i yes do it i listened to the first 20 minutes of it on the preamble and i didn't stop laughing once <laughs> yeah. Yes. Discussions about cookies, which are biscuits. And biscuits which are scones. Yes. Biscuits which are bis- yes, biscuits which are scones. Um hang on a second. Yeah, how can how can a cookie be a cookie? And does that mean Cookie Monster is not the person I thought he was? However, Jake didn't say that the best cookies out there are Girl Scout cookies and he's gonna send us a sample. Which I'm, I I'm up for. Yeah, I'm quite uh, I have been told they are they are the equivalent to humans of dreamies for cats. Mm. So they be crack. Are yeah. they? Uh, sorry, is sorry, is Girl Scouts uh, a brand of cookie? Uh-huh. I thought. Yeah, as I understand it, they are the brand of cookies sold by the Girl Scouts of America. 
Yeah, but I thought. Organized. Hey, hang on a second. I thought I, I thought they were all, they were all homemade, or, or are we somehow promoting some some form of child slavery with the fact that we're accepting cookies from Girl Scouts from across the water? If the Girl Scouts want to row over here and give us some cookies, then I'm happy to accept them. They won't have their tip, <laughs> but you know, I'm happy to support the Girl Scouts of America. It, it lends a whole new meaning to home delivery. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes indeed. If you're not if you're not following us on Twitter, folks, look at what you're missing. Well, look, yeah, we got we, we've got Biscuit Gate, we've got Dunk Gate, you know, Marmite. Yes. We've got Hobbsy making me buy things. Yes. Now we should discuss Dunk Gate quickly. We should we, Neil. Yeah, because you're wrong, Neil. No, dunk, not. Dunk, yes, Dunkin' Biscuits has to be done in tea, not coffee. Not coffee. You know, Q Monty Python esque. Voice. I don't like tea. <laughs> you learn to like tea. You should dunk. You should dunk a good, rich tea biscuit. Possibly a digestive. Or a walk of shortbread. Oh, and a walk of shortbread. Oh, Mr. Oh. Mr. Mr. Cr- Mr. Cranky Lawyer had it just oh, right. He did at that. Oh, Scottish, all butter short shortbread, dunked in a hot cup of tea. Oh, life to almost a status as an honorary Brit is on its way. Yes. Having said that, I did like the comment. I forget. Oh, sorry. Apologies. I forget who made it. Who then followed it? Hang on a second. You've forgotten the caramel and chocolate. <laughs> Your Twix bar appears to be missing the caramel and chocolate. Yes. <laughs> Scottish shortbread, excellent choice of biscuit. Beverage yeah. could do better. Tea. Tea. One sugar, just nice. Two. One and a half. Another Compromise. Half. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Just be that little bit sweeter, just just mm. to yeah, just, just yeah. good. Whatever spats we have, and as I will reiterate, I don't like tea. Yeah, you mentioned that. So whatever spats yeah. we got to do this week, um, are we ignoring him here, Hobbsy? Yeah, completely. Good, right. Moving on. Yeah. Breakfast gates. That was the next one. Oh, right. breakfast gate. What? The, what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh! I don't know. You go away for two gigs around the weekend, and all the fun happens. Getting back to episode 25 of the Veteran Wargamer, which I do uh, say you should all listen to. Indeed. So Jay was joined by Dave Tubbs, who is mm. one of his co-hosts. They were chatting about their favourite books and everything. But before that, they were talking about cookies and biscuits and things. And Dave Tubbs turned around and had a go with the British breakfast. What? He said the which? British breakfast... Which one of the candidate British breakfasts was he specifically having a go at? Oh, the the, the classic pork based um, and beans uh, British breakfast. What you mean? You mean sausage, bacon, egg, fried bread, black pudding, baked yes. beans, grilled tomato, some kind of egg or other? Yes, mushrooms. That one. Mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms. Yeah, don't forget the mushrooms. Yes, Mr. Tubbs is not a fan of um, black pudding or, or blood pudding, as he likes to call it. <sighs> doesn't like doesn't like the, the selection. And, well, we, we had a little bit of an argument on, on Twitter. Well, a discussion. It wasn't an argument. When I well, no, it can't be an argument. As I said before, if you're an argument, he'd have to have the chance of being right. Yes, and he was wrong. Very yeah. wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, I mean you know, what was he proposing? Should we, should we place a great British breakfast? Well, apparently um, they cook bacon better than us. Really? Heresy. I know. So there was that. And then we got into Marmite. Don't, ugh. Well, why not? Is... Why might, to be fair, as one thing for which there is in fact an argument. On the no, there isn't. No, the there isn't. Is, not world, at all. The world is divided on, as far as I can understand it, slightly weird genetic grounds as to whether you like it or not, and you don't get a choice in the matter. Really? I, I don't like it. Oh, it's 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 spreading the devil. It's it's I'm it's afraid we appear. Well, well, I don't know what Luffy thinks, but we appear to be, as a presenter crew, firmly united in our dislike of it. But um, given my Ooh. wife loves it, I'm not about to say say too much against it. And one day, if you get me drunk enough, I'll tell you exactly why I don't like it. But not on the show. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge, Mr. Hobbs. So I shall have to take you up on it. Right. So that's that's next Operation Market Lord and settled then, isn't it? Get Hobbsy drunk enough to tell us about Marmite. And have a recorder nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. I think the whole point of that was it wasn't fit for broadcast, Neil. Yeah. So, that's the opening. 
<laughs> so, you made me spend money. <laughs> I hate yes. you. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, we, we also made Mike buy things. Well, hey. I mean, you can tell us about buying things in the next part of the show, but... I suppose so, but I should protest that you made me buy things and it wasn't even hard. <laughs> oh. Even better, Mr. Hobbs made somebody else buy something. That was even funnier. Mm. Yes. Hello, my the mate Dave. I know you're listening. Hello, Dave. <laughs> that is funny, and we will come back to that shortly. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be catching up with two weeks' worth of what we've been up to, since last time was just so rushed. I must get through to Sergeant Watson's position. Jenkins, cover me! Sergeant Watson, bring your men in. Withdraw. It's all right, sir. We're enjoying ourselves. What? Yes, sir. It's these here chain of command rules, sir. We're having great fun. Chain of command? That's right, sir. It's a challenging but fun blend of command and control. It gives me the freedom I want to fight the way I want to. Never had so much fun, sir. But we've cooked you some sausages. Can't be helped, sir. Me and the lads are staying put. Chain of command, World War II, platoon level rules from two fat lardies. They really put you in control. And they're even better than sausages. What have we been playing? What have we been buying? We might even have painted something. The Meeples and Miniatures crew reveal all. Right. What have we been up to then, chaps? Okay? Okay. Can't remember what I've been up to now. Well, for the last two weeks. Right. Oh, blimey. Shed loads. Oh, cool. God, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Could do. All right. <sighs> okay. Let me, get, let me go and get a pillow then. <laughs> you get a pillow? What? What, what are you trying to do, blind, Mr. Hobbs? Yeah. <clears throat> a little doze whilst you're, whilst you're rabbiting on about losing games. And then on Thursday, I played a game with Dave. Friday, I had a game with Josh. And then on Saturday, I had a game with Dave. The other Dave. Sunday, me and Dave got together. The other other Dave. And, and then I edited the podcast a bit. Yeah. You're playing more games than you, you you have a right to, Neil. It's once a week, one a week. That's all you need. You're showing us up. <laughs> I think I'm leaving all this in. <laughs> uh, welcome back, gentle listener, to uh, Mr. Hobbs berating me for the amount of games I've been playing in the last few weeks. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. Shouldn't be allowed. Everybody would think we're a gaming podcast or something. Yeah, that's ter- it is. I mean, yeah, when it comes down to the fact that well, everybody uh, knows we're a cake and food and biscuits podcast. Uh, uh, games. Well, 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 yeah, apparently so. Uh, yeah, apparently- diversified. People's and miniatures sponsored by Mr. Kipling. He does make exceedingly good cakes. He does. Really? <laughs> dear listener. Wait, thank, feel thanks, free to... thanks for that prompt, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> so, dear listener, feel free to forward about the next 10 minutes because we're about to rant about Ms. Mr. Clipping's cakes. Bake, you know, bake while slices. Yeah, nice. Oh, oh the, lovely. The chocolate brownie slices with the, you know, with the chocolate icing on the top. Nice. French Gorgeous. fancies, yeah. Mm. Battenberg, oh. oh yes, oh yeah. The marzipan, oh. the Viennese whirls. Yeah, I mean mm. that man does his slices well. Oh, he does. He does. He does. He does. He does a good he's slice. He yeah. good cakes. Mm. Good little tarts as well. <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment about his tarts. Shall we talk about games? Let's talk about games. <laughs> I don't like apple pies. 
Mince what? pies, mince, and yeah, Mr. Goodman's apple pies. I can, I can really, I, you know, games, I, I can take or leave. Games. Mince pies, no. Come, come back, Neil. Come back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, we've been playing games for the last two weeks, for the last couple of weeks, funnily enough. Um, and and some of us have been playing more games than others. Some of us have been playing more games than and and, and suddenly discovering how can I possibly play games and edit a podcast all in the same week? Uh, I, yeah, I need a bigger week. <laughs> Terrible. Never mind. So, who would like to go first? Go on. You can go first because you're dying to. Can you remember everything you've done? Can I, play, can I remember everything I've done over the last two weeks? Oh, oh crikey. I can remember, certainly remember everything I've done over the last week. Two weeks? Uh, that's starting to push it. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, we've started uh, we st- since my other mate Dave. Uh, who, as well as be, uh, as well as being a, um, a board uh, a board game convert, has uh, he was uh, he, his other main interest before was MMOs. He used to he used to do a lot of raiding, and anyway, uh, recently he has ceased um, he has ceased to raid so much. He has left a raiding party, and so has a bit more time on his hands. And so to a man that went, what was I doing? Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I have just spent the last thirty seconds trying to figure out who the bloody hell Emma Bowes was, till I finally realised what you said. Emma Bowes. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly, I was about to ask the same question. What's Emma Bowes? M M O S. That's the idea, boy. And that's it. Yeah, oh, M M O S. The trouble is, right. the trouble is, I said to doing Emma Bowes. <laughs> What's the phrase? Edit point. <laughs> no! No, 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 no. <laughs> so what is this Emma Bowes that you talk about? I mean, if you know an Emma Bowes, please let us know. Yes. <clears throat> M-M-O. Multi, multi, what's it? Massively multiplayer online. online. Thank you. Massively, yes. <sighs> anyway, so he's not doing his, he's not playing as much as that now. So, which means that we get more time, uh, that it, all of a sudden we now have Monday night gaming. So, in the last two weeks, uh, I have managed to play four games of Imperial Assault, two games of Ninja All Stars, one game of Star Wars Rebellion. Oh, that's such a good game. One yeah. game of, one game of Tiny, Tiny Epic Galaxies. One game of Tiny Epic Kingdoms, and four games of Tests of Honor. You're just showing off. <laughs> I'll be busy. <laughs> um, no, so okay, so we have Monday night gaming, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, we have started a, a an Imperial Assault campaign because Dave had just uh, my other mate Dave uh, just has the odd. Uh, the odd box or two of Imperial Assault, you know, with the odd with, with the odd extra miniature miniature or two. Uh, so we started Imperial Assault, uh, more of which later. And then been playing Ninja All Stars with Josh, which uh, because amongst other things, I had to talk about about what what I've been buying. Uh, uh, we got some clan boxes. Some of the new clan box. Uh, well, they're not new, but some of the um, expansions for Ninja All Stars. Uh, which are actually really nice. And then Saturday, Saturday, uh, I took a, a wander over to Warlord Games HQ over in Nottingham and took part in the Warring States campaign day, which was organised by the guys at Infamous Gaming. Hello, Kieran and Matt from the Three Swords podcast. And I hate you for having an absolutely awesome logo. Uh, <laughs> Amongst other things, uh, but I had a great day playing with tw- uh, nineteen other guys uh, playing Test of Honor. Uh, four games of Test of Honor over the space of a day, whilst scoring was done. Uh, in, at the end of the day, most of us were not really too bothered about the score, and uh, we just had a had a great time. And it it did actually cement to me that actually you know our Test of Honor. Is a good game. I did enjoy it a lot, uh, and everybody will, will be obviously pleased to know that my Imperial Japanese 
warband, uh, as you may have seen uh, on social media or on the blog, uh, lived up to their colour scheme. And What were uh, they, yellow? Have you not seen them? Mr. Whitaker, where have you been? How could you mostly, miss Mostly Birmingham. <laughs> mostly Birmingham. Right, okay. Uh, I'll explain okay. it then. <laughs> I'll explain it, yeah. Okay, right. So for the... Okay, so for, for, for so those are the people who haven't seen the picture. Yeah, my war band was inspired by Tiny Hordes himself, uh, who did it first uh, and inspired me. Uh, my, my war band were, um, had a somewhat Star Wars theme of the black and white variety. Uh, and, uh, thank you, uh, yeah, and thank you, yes, thanks has to go yet again. Uh, I, I thanked him last week, but it was brilliant. Thank you to, uh, thank you to Gareth, uh, Mr. Beamish, uh, for providing some spiffing decals for me, uh, which really finished off the miniatures. I got it all, I got it all sorted. Sorry, in the expected style, I was, uh, varnishing the figures on the Friday night before the, um, uh, b- b- before the event, but anyway, uh, yes, they were in pa- yes they were painted like imperial they were painted like imperial stormtroopers, Mister Whitaker, and they uh, and they lived up to their reputation in that. I got, uh, basically, I, I you know I hardly hit a thing all day. <laughs> Let, let's just say, Mister Vader, well, you know the the not Darth Vader devoted samurai, the sidekick to the Emperor himself. Let's just say he was very much more like a New Hope sort of Vader as opposed to a Rogue One sort of Vader. As in, you know, a bit slow, a bit clumsy, and at the end of the day, yeah, couldn't hit much. Oh, dear. But what a great day. Really, really good day. Commiserations especially has to go to a Mr. Matt Rattenbury, uh, he of the aforementioned Three Swords podcast and owner of, uh, and owner of the awesome T-shirt. I didn't think it was possible for anybody to have worse dice look than me. Uh, and then I met Matt and played Matt and saw with my own eyes somebody who could roll dice even worse than I did. Suffice it to say, our, our, our battle was something of a comedy of errors. But uh, but yes, commiserations to Matt. I think both of us are wishing to lose that one. I think Matt, Matt just lost it quicker than I did. Especially when you consider you, you have things like um, his lone horseman survived... We reckoned something like twenty um twenty three hits from two samurai before I killed him. Twenty three. Twenty three. I missed him twenty three times. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we counted. He lasted five rounds of combat against uh, against a hero and a devoted samurai uh, before I killed him. Uh, yes. So, uh, oh, I've got a minute. How long have I been trying to kill him? Never mind. And, and, you know, and uh, I do things like critical failing while rolling seven dice. Uh, and stuff, and, and stuff like this. It, it was, it was a marvellous day. Really enjoyed it. No, it was, it was a great laugh. Thank you so much to the guys at, uh, Infamous Gaming, uh, for organising the event. Uh, look forward to the next one. You know, it was, yeah, it was a brilliant day. And, uh, thank you to, thank you to everybody for attending. And hello to Dave Meller, uh, who had this uh, awesome undead samurai warband. Uh, he actually won uh, Best Painted Warband on the day. And it was absolutely awesome. Martin Hotchkiss, the aforementioned Matt Rattenbury, and also to Terry Maltman, uh, who were my four opponents. And uh, especially to Terry, who completely wiped the floor with me in my last battle. Fittingly, the, the the Imperials uh, losing to the Eco Wiki in the last, uh, you know, being overthrown by the Rebels uh, in in the last game of the day. So uh, yeah, really good. Really enjoyed it. Excellent stuff. So that's all my gaming. Uh, so painting, as you heard, um, I painted a, I, I painted a Samurai Warband. Woohoo! I haven't done anything. I haven't achieved anything since then. Although I am very keen to uh get the opposite side painted for uh to someone now so uh, so we have uh, you know I I have a matched army to fight against Bo- buying stuff buying stuff back to a couple of kickstarters Gloomer kill fourth kickstarter the expansion set for Gloomer kill fourth back back to that did the back of the seventh continent kickstarter 
You might not have done. Because somebody else beat me to it. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, Dave. Uh, uh, Hi, Dave. (laughs) All Mr. Hobbs did was tweet about it. All Mr. Hobbs did. Don't do it, Dave. Too late. (laughs) I'm losing track, Neil. Which, Dave? Uh, uh, Mr. Hickman. My other mate, Dave. Dave, that's Dave who spends stuff, Mike, as opposed to Dave who doesn't spend stuff. And I yes, when he I'm, does. Yeah. This is my other mate, Dave. All yes. Right, okay. Uh, yes. He, uh, yes, he backs seven the continent, so I, I currently have decided not to. As I say, we have aforementioned there have been some, uh, there have been some Ninja All Stars clans purchased, although I don't know whether that counts because that's a, that's a, an early Christmas present for Josh. So I don't, I don't know if that counts. Have they been opened? Possibly. Then they count. Oh, okay. Uh, and I also received uh, something which I am going to put a review on the blog of in the next couple of days, so it should be up by the time you're listening to this. Uh, right. Deep Cut Studios are starting a new service. Uh, called Printo Mat, uh, which basically means that you can print an image of your choice onto a gaming mat, <laughs> and that and those gaming mats go from any size. So from like you know these like, like the twenty four by fourteen like you know card play mats, right up to you know whatever you want. <laughs> so as long as you have a, as long as you, as long as you have an image, uh, that, uh, is of sufficient quality to print. Bear in mind, this uh, does mean you're going to be chucking around sizable fractions of a gigapixel. Uh, yeah. There will be a review on the blog. Uh, but they, they produce them, uh, you can have them in, I think it's cloth or neoprene. Uh, so I got a play, um, I got a play mat for the Lord of the Rings card game. Uh, which is some, uh, cause somebody produced one, uh, on Board Game Geek and said, I've just designed this mat. Here you are. And it's, it's, it's a two player mat for, uh, for, for Lord of the Rings card game. And it's, it's, it's really nice. And they've done a really good job with it. So, uh, that's a new service, which they are, go- they are going to be providing. And, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. So, but look on the blog for the full review. So you, you say you just send them a picture and they will do you a mat. Oh. If only I had a picture of somebody underneath a, a desk that I could get printed on a six by four. Don't you dare, Hobbs. Oh, that's your Christmas <laughs> present sorted out, Mr. Shook. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't care what it's going to cost. It's going to be worth it. Get it. Yes. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <sighs> okay, Mr. Whitaker. Who me? What have you been up to? Yes, you. Oh right. Um. So, Mr. Hobbs is on, Mr. Hobbs is on the naughty step for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Mr. Hobbs has to go and find a find an image on his computer. That shouldn't be hard then. <sighs> so, um, yeah. What have I done? Um, we last week we had the first battle in the Game of Thrones campaign for which I finished Ooh. painting my night watch. Mm-hmm. And they suffered the fate of all good first-run armies ever. Oh, don't hold me to a man. That's the one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Died horribly to a man. But it was fun. It's a nice little system, is um, Dragon Rampant. With, we're only making subtle changes, so it's pretty much cool, Dragon Rampant. And it was good fun. It was... Um, other than that, I have 3D printed a couple of Crusader Mark II AA tanks in 15mm, because I have a scenario that needs them. I have backed a couple of Kickstarters. Um, the, in fact, I have backed three. Three? Three. Good grief. I know, Good grief. I know. There's no stopping There's the man. There's no stopping the man, is there? So let's, let's just to be sure that we get it right, let's bring up the Kickstarter.com page. Look at my recently backed. So we have the Sully Fourth folks, as I mentioned very briefly last week, 
are doing a 28 mil classic movies pulp miniatures range. Oh yes, um, I'm currently backing them at at the level of a quid because it means I get to vote on the next range of figures. <laughs> um, I may up that. Well, what are you after? I'd like them to. I'd like them to produce the African Queen figures. Currently, they have a right a batch of miniatures from Casablanca, mm-hmm. uh, plus some extra bits of MDF scenery and the like. Uh, the next vote was for Tales of the Golden Monkey, about which I know absolutely nothing. And a, nope. and a very nice stretch girl of an MDF piano for Casablanca, obviously. Um, and the next miniatures pack appears to be the Maltese Falcon. Ooh. Um, and the next vote comes at 3,000, and they're currently at... Scroll, scroll, scroll. Three, two thousand three hundred and twenty-four, and the next vote will probably also not go to the to um, the African Queen, but never mind. Uh, so that's that. There is a fringe Kickstarter from Eskis Miniatures for decor pool wargame on six millimeter and quinze millimeter terrain, mm-hmm. 50, 60 mil and. Six mil 3D print files for some quite nice Normandy buildings, which are considerably more built up than the classic MDF stuff. So they've got some multi story townhouses and, and, and the like that actually look rather nice. And the, the total pledge to um, get all the print files is a massive 20 euros. So well worth it. And they do two versions of every file. Uh, one lot in six mil, one lot in fifteen mil, with more detail, and they look rather nice. And then, and then I back seven continent. Well done, that man. The full second edition and all the stretch goals and the new stuff. Cool. One hundred and twenty-nine bucks. It's not bad actually for price. They've got a few extra add-ons as well. You want to pick up? Uh, yeah. Um, I will look at that when when we get. What extra add ons are they? Um, I think they've just released the um the weather one. Isn't that a is that actually an add on or is that a I think that's an add on just a stretch goal. The stretch goals are mental. Yeah. Okay, so the optional buys they've got at the moment. They've got the, the weather one which is facing the elements. That's that's definitely well worth picking oh, up. Oh the card sleeves are a, yeah. The card oh, yeah. sleeves are an extra bone dice for an extra the card sleeves for everything else are an extra. I wouldn't bother getting the the um, cards for everything else, but um, I, I, I would get the the um, the minimum ones for your action decks. I, I very rarely sleeve games, but I can be convinced. I haven't sleeved it at the moment, but I am thinking of getting the ones for the action deck because you use them a lot. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, I uh, I think I've had a tragic accident with that Kickstarter. Terrible, very absolutely terrible. Um, that's about it. I think I spent most of the weekend variously in Birmingham at various gigs. I'm get- it's very temp. That's very tempting. Isn't it? <laughs> if you have it already, there are pledges for just the bits you don't have. Yeah, that's what I've done. It's interesting when uh, when when Tom Vassell says, uh, "Easily one of my favourite games of the year, possibly the best adventure board game ever designed." Yeah. That's high praise indeed from somebody who, uh, yes. Mm. Although his his latest rant on friendly local gaming stores is not winning him friends, apparently. Oh, right, okay. Uh, well worth listening to his most recent the the most recent episode of that particular podcast. If you want some good controversy. Ah, all right, okay. When somebody else in your gaming group is purchasing that game, have I mentioned you can play a solo? You may have mentioned you can play By it solo. By the way, you can play it solo. Mm-hmm. It's very good solo as well. <sighs> Is it my turn whilst you uh, debate? <laughs> what about I, I show it to you on Saturday when, when we meet up? I'll just bring it along with me. You can just have a little look at it. Go on then, Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> Go on then, if you must. Such a rat bag. Yeah. Is it my turn? Yes, it's your turn. 
Okay. Um, I haven't done much painting uh, since I returned from foreign parts. I have started putting together and base coating uh, a Nazgul on a Fell Beast in my Lord of the Rings stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how you have one coat on it so far, go well. And I've started my Rowan army. Um, oh, yes. Yes, the horse controversy continues. Ah, many horses. Uh, so I've just started doing the foot troops at the moment, get them out of the way with, because they'd be quick. And then cavalry time. I've been playing games. Uh, I went to Evesham last last week, last Friday. Met up with Jim and Aid, and we played the game that can't be mentioned. Uh -huh. And uh, did lots for that. And I hope. Oh, you just oh you just, you just wonder if, you just reminded me of something else I bought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carry on. Mm -hmm. And um, I met up with my mate Mark in Abergavenny. Get me capital of the world. And we had a game of Seven Continents. We're, we're carrying on our little um, first scenario. We're about two thirds of the way through, and it's great. Uh, I just love the game. Just two of me, I think we spent about three hours just exploring and finding things and building shovels and silly things like that. And it's great. So we're going to try and finish off the first scenario next time we meet up. Not selling it, see me. Building shovels. Yeah, you need, you need a shovel. You never know when you might. Well, you might need a shovel. You might need snowshoes. You might need a. Might need a raft. There's many things you might need, Neil. You don't right. know when you need them. Um, and we also had a game of the Lord of the Rings card game. Mm, a proper yes. Two player game, and we both really like it. We, again, we only just did the. The sort of easy version, just to cement the rules down and work out how it works for two players. Yes. Um, but yeah, we really had fun with that. We we defeated um, the first scenario, which is good. So yeah, um, buying. I bought a few bits and bobs. Um, I have back seven continents. Uh, no surprise to anybody. I bought a Sauron figure. Oh right. Because I was going through all of um, my my stuff that I got from from Jeff and from Aid, and um, I've got the um, oh, what's the name of um, Elendil and um, Isildur. Yes. Yeah. I thought, well, I haven't got a Sauron, so uh, I picked up a Sauron from from eBay. So I'm going to paint that up soon. Shouldn't be too hard. It's sort of silvery, darky silvery, and black. I bought Arkham Horror Living Car Game. Yes, I, I, I spotted that. Yeah. That was a bit that was a bit out left field. Uh, that's Mark's fault. <laughs> we was we 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 having so much fun playing the Lord of the Rings one. He mentions that there was the Cthulhu one and I looked into it and it's a solo game, it's a well get a game for one or two players. I'd watch a few videos, it looks very good. And I was in um I was in Firestorm, and it fell off the shelf. I was, I was going to say, you, you, just, you, just, you just walk close to those shelves, didn't you? Those, 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 those dangerous shelves. Yeah. So, yeah, I picked that up. And so, currently, I've, you know, I'm, I'm playing war games, tabletop war games, board games, card games. You know, I'm, I'm turning into a real omnivorous sort of game of at the moment. I'm playing everything I can. It's Yeah. Cool. Welcome Welcome to our world. Yeah, thank you. Finally. I don't know about you. I've been contemplating because it's it's you know, even now looking into the distance, you know Christmas and the New Year isn't that far off. And I was contemplating um favourite games of the year. Oh god, yeah we got you five and we and it was like, A, only five, and B, can I actually get a miniature war game in there? That's a scary thought. <laughs> we, we have had a bit, I mean, f for a number of years, we've been, you know, people have had a go of us for, for not mentioning board games. That, that, that's people such as me. You, 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 yeah. You, yeah, yeah you. Oh. Are you happy now, Mr. Whitaker? <laughs> I am. I am. I am borderline ecstatic. Can we talk a bit more about war games, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. Oh, one thing I, I have um, been chatting about, which is a war game. Uh, it, it's my mate Mark's 60th uh, in January, so we're going to do a massive, great chain of command game in, in Abergavenny. Um, war uh, gaming capital of the universe. Yes. I like what they did for Sid's birth, birthday. At, um, oh, the cool. Ladies, so we're going to put on uh, We're going to hire a church hall and we're going to have a great big, long 16 foot table. And uh, we're going to play a game with about eight or ten of us. Oh, that sounds yeah. cool. Me and Jeff are going to be empiring. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Hello, Jeff. Does Jeff know yeah, about it? Yeah, it was his idea. Oh, I was, <laughs> I was about to say, oh, oh, he does now. Excellent stuff. Uh, Is that it, it then? No, right, okay, well, so you now got two games to show me on Saturday. Yeah. Because Southern Continent and <laughs> Arkham Horror. And so Arkham Horror's. That's different from the that's that's different from the other one, isn't it? They did another living, or is that the the Cthulhu living card game? Is that the only no, one? No, they did um they did a Call of Cthulhu living. Card yes, game. they did a Call of Cthulhu, one, but but Arkham Horror is like the new yeah. one. Yeah, Call of Cthulhu was the Ooh. sort of two player competitive one. Yes, Arkham Horror is um one or two player, or you can go up to four player by even two packs, um co op. Oh, right. so it's so it's it is almost like a, a kind of vaguely Lord of the Rings yeah, in that yeah, sense. The but mechanics are a lot better. It's got much more story to it, and yeah, it looks great. Have a look on that there YouTube. Ooh. You may find a sort of um, a, a tutorial for it. Ooh, interesting. I mean, we've uh, yeah, because we've been uh, as you know, we played a little, we played a little bit of Mansions of Madness, mm. which. Funny enough, we, I think we might end up playing tomorrow night because Mister Luffy's ill. So and we um, and following our imperial and following yet another failure uh, at an imperial assault mission on Monday. Because funny enough, because funny enough, um, you know, I told you the story about my dwarf not being able to get through a door, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, in, yes. In, 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 yeah. in Dungeon Saga, in a great deal of detail. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, I, I had a similar experience in Imperial Assault, where it appeared that uh, it appeared that uh, I couldn't get through a locked door with a blaster um, in about five rounds. <laughs> Did you try? You yes. Know, trying to turn the key. Key? They have keys. Yeah, so these doors they have handles and things. You just turn the handle and open the door. Did you try that? Is that Mister Hickman? He's cheating again. <laughs> he didn't tell me that. <laughs> he said it was locked. <laughs> anyway, yes. So uh, yes. So it appears my characters have problems with doors. We're going to play Mansions of Madness, which is uh, you know, again it's it's Arkham Horror, Cthulhu, uh, but that's the miniatures game. And I've got, and I've got Elder Sign, which is the uh, which is the solo to eight player co op. Dice game. All you, all you need now is Eldritch is, Horror to complete. Yeah, well, uh, as I say, it's it's one of those things of essentially you're doing the same thing, just in 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 different ways. So it's like, do I need a card game to do it as well? Well, well I mean, that's that's a question that only you can answer. It. And and just just how many copies of the Necronomicon are sitting in your bookshelf? <laughs> just the one, but it talks to me at night and tells me the Burns thing. Anyway, and on that note, uh, I think I think it's time to move on. So shall we uh, sh- shall we adjourn from this uh, this uh, this conversation about uh, all these games and everything we've been playing and buying? Uh, good well, grief, well anyone, Neil anyone actually has think... any sanity points left. Uh, indeed, I mean you know here you are. I mean I'm currently on my screen. I've got one screen's got the Seventh Continent. Kickstarter just, on it. Just, Another just screen's click. got right, YouTube right on it. Right hand column, about halfway down, just click. <laughs> you want, you, How much is posted? <laughs> it's done really well, mm. hasn't it? Was it 20, 20, 20, 23 and a half thousand backers? Mm. Yeah. It's pretty much doubled what they did in the first game. But anyway, wait. tune in next yeah. week, um, yeah. dear listener, and find out how long it's taken Neil to back it. And whether Neil still has any sanity. Mm. I'll hit the remind me button. (laughs) Oh dear.
The nation is vast. There are battlefields of old. Great convention wars. And worlds of fantasy to explore. Who will guide us across this great geek nation? Since 2010, Geek Nation Tours have been providing holidays for groups of like-minded people. Whatever your nature of geek. Tabletop gaming? TV? Film? Comic books? Sports? Or science? Geek Nation Tours caters for you. Visit www.geeknationtours.com for more details. And join the great... Geek Nation. It's time to go into the rules. It's the Meeples and Miniatures in depth review. We go deep. Really deep. No, I mean really, really deep. For our feature part of this episode, we are going to do a in-depth review uh, of a board game. Although it has an awful lot of miniatures. I suppose it still counts as a board game. Yeah, it's played on board. Played on the board, but yes, it has tons of miniatures in it. So, so, uh, so it's a miniature. It's it's a board miniature game. So that game is Imperial Assault, uh, or give it its full title: Star Wars Imperial Assault, uh, released by Fantasy Flight Games in 2014, and it's. Currently rated rather highly on Board Game Geek. Uh, it's 8.2, giving it an overall rank of 21 and a thematic rank of 11. So, pretty highly rated game. Is it worth the rankings? Let's find out. Let's talk all about Imperial Assault, shall we? Now, rather interestingly, we've all, we've all now played Imperial Assault. As you've heard, I, um, uh, I mean, I, I, I've I probably played it the most recent since um, uh, I've only uh, I only played it for the first time two weeks ago, uh, but uh, but we we have all played Imperial Assault, so let us delve into it. All right. So, who wants to give us a quick description of the game, how many players, and the time it takes to play? Ooh. Okay. Okay, Imperial Assault is a, as I said, it's a miniatures game. It takes place on a uh, on a on a board that you build from it. <laughs> from different tiles. Uh, those tiles are in fact double sided. Actually, even in the main box, the, there's actually uh, there is a large amount of different variations of board tile that you can use. It's for two to five players. Which is which is typically uh well, it depends, doesn't it? And the, the, the campaign game is is a one bad guy and one to four good guys. Yeah. Uh, and there is also a skirmish game which I guess we'll get to later. Indeed, which is which is I think primarily aimed at being a two player game. But uh, essentially the, the campaign game is I am not intending to put it down it's Dungeon Saga in space, in Star Wars in space. Well it Let's face it; it uses the same engine as Descent. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, so yes, it, it is. It, it is a retheme of the Descent Dungeon Bash a game that has been has been a a, a staple of the fa- the fantasy flight genre for several years. Uh, but yes, they've uh, they've just reskinned it for Star Wars. And oh, what a what a skin it has! Ooh. two to five players. In the campaign version, as we said, one person plays uh, the Imperials, and everybody plays uh, heroes of the Rebellion. And the idea is, uh, in the as in another uh, any other dungeon bash, you have a mission to complete. Uh, so you have a, for want of a better phrase, well, yeah, several several tiles are laid out on on 
on the table, which denote your playing area. There will be perhaps several Imperial miniatures on the table, or enemy miniatures on the table, should I say. Uh, they may be Imperials, they may be uh, Bounty Hunters, um, Creatures, or what have you. They're what you can see. And then there may be other areas that, might, that could be hidden by doors or those are the bits and pieces where you could, like, for example, open a door and lo and behold, find um, a storm troop, uh, a, a bunch of storm troopers behind it, for example. Or anyway, so you are given a mission to complete. Uh, you normally have to complete that mission within a certain number of turns, and in the campaign, certainly in the campaign version, what tends or what happens is is that. Uh, depending whether you win or lose, you end up going to uh, then go to subsequent missions differently, depending on whether you win or lose the uh, uh, particular mission you're playing, and you potentially get rewarded for doing so. Obviously, you, you, you're you more likely to get a, a higher reward for completing a mission as opposed to failing it. Indeed. So, so each player plays one character. Yes. And, and during the campaign, not quite. You do have the option in the three, two or three player game of playing two each rather than one each. Really? All right. Uh, in the two player game that we played, or the version that we got, uh, if you're two player, uh, we are playing. Sorry, we are playing the three player version. Should I say? And what we've done is is we've gone so uh, our the heroes we're playing are legendary. Oh right, yeah, that's oh, one yeah. option. Your other option is you you treat the three player game as the five player game. Oh right, and, both, and just both, play two. Yeah, just play two each. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean that works too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great, great escape from teamwork and other fun stuff. And yeah, in some scenarios, actually, that would probably work out better. Uh, it's like like the scenario we had last night. It, 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 it would have worked an awful lot easier. It would have worked an awful lot better if we'd have had uh, three or four people as opposed to two. But there we go. Yeah. So the the heroes that you're you're playing, they're they're not the heroes that you know from the films. They are sort of should we say generic heroes, but the characters from the films do pop up now and again. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. So, shall we talk, chat about the um, what's in the box? Because there's a I, fair bit of stuff in the core box, isn't there? Okay, over to you two guys. Since I since I don't uh, since I'm the one that doesn't actually own it. <laughs> oh, mine's over there. <laughs> my, mine's in my hand. So <laughs> good. Um, I'm not sure I can get mine down without precision. My, mine's mine's had one of the the, the nice um, felled hair do foam insults for it. Insults. <laughs> inserts for it uh, so so my mine is all nicely packed away in in a foam insert that just nicely fits inside the box uh which is actually very nice for a point of view of keeping everything from bouncing around especially once you've painted them which i haven't yet excellent okay so i'm picking up the large box it's a a large uh, fantasy flight box about five inches deep stuffed full of gubbins you get 34 it's a heavy box. It's a heavy box, yeah. Mine's a bit lighter now because there's no miniatures in it. Because I painted them. Right, you get 34 plastic figures. You get 11 dice, 6 hero sheets, 1 round FET dial, 39 deployment cards, 10 story cards, 14 side mission cards, 18... This goes on for a while, chaps. <laughs> Basically, you get an awful lot of stuff. You get 59 map tiles, damage tokens, strain tokens. Everything you need is in the Note, box. 59 double-sided map tiles. Yeah. Mm. The miniature... and, they are, and they are gorgeous as yeah. well. Yeah. They're not, too, they're not too shabby, are they? They're not. It's, it, it's the quality you would expect. You also get uh, a bonus of a Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader figure pack included in the box. Or used to. I don't know if you saw. You did. I didn't. Yeah. No, I should, should have bought it early. So that's what you get in the box. And as you, as Neil said, it's a campaign game where you play a bunch of link scenarios with side scenarios 
which help your players gain equipment, experience. And the one thing I really like about this is the player playing the Empire character or characters, who obviously has all the baddies, they also gain experience and stuff. So it's not a case of mm -hmm. the guy playing the, the Empire is just a passive player playing the Games Master. He's a player in, in the game. And he wants to win as much as as the players do. Yeah. So, shall we chat about rules? Hmm. Okay, so let's chat about how a, how a, a scenario is set up, what you need to do. Let me go and dig out, as I have handily the PDF of the Quick Start Guide, which is actually quite useful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It has to be pointed out that okay, in in the the way that uh, Fantasy Flight seems to do things these days, because uh, it, 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 it seems to be a thing that they're doing with an awful lot of their games, they have a learn to play. They do set of rules. Uh, then you have a rules reference, which has which it has everything in it in alphabetical order, and then you have potentially FAQs and errata and 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 a whole load of other stuff that's downloadable online, but. Uh, they're very, they're very, very good at kind of going right. Okay, so the first time you play this game, you start with you start with the learn to play book. Uh, yeah, you um, read to page X, and then you play your first game. And so that's this all case, you need to know. In this case, page X is page four, which starts with the tutorial setup, which basically says build the map, hmm. decide who's playing the imperial, pick pick one of your hero, pick your heroes. Um, then there are then you get you get a hero sheet, you get a figure, you get your weapon from your class desk deck, and you get the rest of your class deck to hang on to for later. You get some activation tokens, you get some deployment cards which go with the Imperial, uh, and everybody puts their figures where the scenario map says they're supposed to. And then you dig out all your dice, your condition deck, your supply deck, all your tokens, and then you're ready to start. So it's it's the typical you know twenty minutes of of finding that odd one that one odd piece that was the wrong way up in the box so you can't find it to build the map from it. <laughs> the one thing though that is brilliant uh, with with the stuff is that at least they've numbered the tiles. Yes, they have. Uh, every scenario on, has on lived. both on both sides has a little note at the bottom saying so for example your interest, your introductory scenario says you need 02b 07b 25a 27a 32a 33a 36a and two copies of 38a yes and they're all numbered you know quite small print but they're all numbered on both sides the a side and the b side so you know when you've got the right ones yes it's just it's totally. still possible to to be rummaging about in the box for the one tile you know you need to discover it's in fact been sitting the other way up and, and has green on the back of it, and you're looking for muddy brown or something. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I take your point. But at the end of the day, at least they've numbered it, so it is. It isn't just based on visual recognition. It's based no, on it's the not. fact that there's, there's a number. So, so if all else fails, you can in fact simply take out all the tiles and start looking for numbers. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, been uh, there, done that. Been there, done that. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> and basically, it's an alternate activation game. Mm. Indeed. So, and, are... and the two factions have completely different activation rules. Mm. They do. So there's two phases to each turn. We have the activation phase. The players alternate back and forth. Start with the rebel player. They activate one of the figures, and they resolve two actions. Mm. And here's and where the first difference happens. Yes. Because the rebels, uh, there are. There are some things you can only do once if you're an Imperial player. Like attack. Like attack. Rebels can do it with both of their actions. Yeah. So it, it's what we've seen before in lots of games. You, you pick one figure, or in case of the Imperials, you pick one of your cards because with the Imperials you may have a, a squad of Stormtroopers. So you may have three yeah, Stormtroopers on one on, card. On one card, and you activate them all on that one card. Yeah. And they go one at a time. So each each figure has two things they can do, which are they can move, attack, interact with something, rest, or do a special ability if if they've got that. 
and they'll be listed on the card. Yeah, and then once you've done that, it goes over to the other side, they activate one, and then back and forth until everybody's finished. Yeah, and, and it's actually quite simple, really, mm. from that point of view. Um, it, so it is, to a degree, it's I go, you go. Um, there are abilities which let you interrupt. And if the other the interesting, of course, if the, the forces wind up a little unbalanced due to casualties or whatever, you can find yourself with a bunch of figures to activate at the end of the turn, which can be quite useful. Indeed. So the thing we haven't discussed, and seeing this is a fantasy flight game, shook him, there's no shock to anybody. Guess what? They're dice. They're all different colours and they've all got weird symbols on their faces. <laughs> and many of them are different shapes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what you'd expect from X-Wing, Armada, you name it. It's the standard fantasy flight um, icon-driven icon dice mechanic. Uh, so, movements. Let's do that first. How does yeah. movement work, chaps? Well, you have speed. And, and your move is equal to your speed. Um, diagonally, you can move diagonally. It's squared, but we should say it's a squared board. Uh, you can move one square orthogonally or diagonally. Um, and the, the interesting little subtlety it's worth remembering is that to a move action does not mean I have to move all these spaces. A move action says I am claiming four movement points to be available to me during the course of my turn. So you can so you can, for example, take a move action, take your four movement points, move two of them, shoot, and then move two more. Yeah. Which is it's a subtlety that, that a couple of, that a couple of people I played with missed the first time and it's actually quite important. Yeah, it is very important because I missed it the first couple of times. Yeah. I think so you can spend your movement points any time during your activation. Uh, once you've said I am buying movement points, then then you you're li at liberty to use them at any point during the, whatever you do with your other action, which is quite handy. So, for example, you can, if you're using an interact action to open a door, you can claim four movement points, use two of them to walk up to the door, use an interact action to open the door, use two more points to walk through it. Yeah, which is quite nice. Um, obviously, the the terrain tiles have got different sort of well, terrain on them, so. There's things you can't move through, so you've got walls, which are shown as like a black line, so you can't move through a wall. There's impassable areas, which are sort of dotted red which lines. Which are also things you can't move through, but there's a, there's a nice distinction, because the way the maps are drawn, between things you can see through, but not move through, and things you can't move through or see through. Yes. So you have little low walls that you can't you can see over to shoot over, but you can't move over, which is quite nice. It's, it's all... And it's clear that they've gone to the effort of not leaving any areas of ambiguity on the boards. No, it's it's all very straightforward. You know, if if it's difficult, uh, a, a difficult area, there's a blue line around it, which means it's, 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 it's And as soon as you enter into that blue area, it's costing you more movement points. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, very elegantly done. Yeah, and you know, you can move through a space occupied by a friendly or neutral figure. You can't move through a space occupied by an enemy. So it, it's what you expect. Yeah, it's, it's very wow. sensible. The, the next thing you probably ought to cover is line of sight, because that's actually, when you get it, it's really actually quite elegant. Mm. All right. So for line of sight, you take one corner of the base that's trying to see, so one corner of the square that base is in, uh, and you, if you can trace two unbroken lines to two different corners of your target figure, then you can see it. And that sounds a little difficult to start with, but if once you've seen a few examples, it copes with things like firing round corners beautifully. Mm. It's quite a subtle little, quite a subtle little rule, but uh, and and again. Fantasy Flight have covered all the bases in the, in the back of the... I think it's in the back of the rules compendium, isn't it? There's about two pages of example line-of-sight situations, which I think cover just about every possible eventuality. Yeah. We found one they didn't cover. Really? Yeah, which was... 
if you're stood behind somebody else and you're firing, uh, effectively you're leaning out behind from behind somebody, you're, imme you're, imme you're immediately behind somebody else and you're firing um, at somebody further, de yeah, further away from you. Uh, and funnily enough, that bit wasn't in the rules. So, but it's like, it, it was this thing of, well, if you're firing down alongside or down along the line of a of a person who's immediately in front of you, but you're not crossing their square, does that still count as blocking line of sight or not? No more than it does if it's a wall. Quite. But it took a bit of yeah. convincing certain people <laughs> that that was the case. Luffy? No, no, Mr. Hickman. Oh, right. He was playing the Imperial player. I was shooting at him. All right, you okay. can't do that. You, you can't do that. I'm leaning... I'm, I'm just... I, you know, it's, it's just as if I'm leaning around a wall. It just happens to be the player in front of me. <laughs> That's who Stormtroopers... That, that, so that Wookiee's fat butt. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yes. It's one of the problems with... As I think um, when we were talking to Jake about Dead Zone, he, we, he identified that one of the problems with um, squared grid board games of uh, miniature games is getting your line of sight rules right yeah and he chose a particular method for, for for determining line of sight stroke cover and and imperial assaults picked a different one i have to say i quite like it because once once you understand what you can and can't do there is actually no argument although you appear to of course manage to find a counter example because you clearly play with a bunch of argumentative but what not <laughs> <laughs> Put it this way. Put it this way. Buying one of those, uh, buying one of those lasers that projects the line, just occasionally helps. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah, will yes, will yes, will help a lot. But it is it is pretty clear um, that, that I've, as I said, I've not yet come across an ambiguous state case, but I may have been lucky. Yeah. It was being argumentative simply because it wasn't an example in the rules. <laughs> It doesn't say about being behind another player. Yes, but it says about being behind a wall or being behind a piece of scenery that otherwise blocks line of sight. Isn't it the same thing, Mr. Hickman? Hello. Um, not, that I'm, not that I'm bitter at all. No, no, no. That's not coming across. <laughs> no, not so, at all. No. It, it sort of is actually mentioned in one of the examples in append about third example in Appendix 1. There's a line of sight traced down the side of a figure. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> yeah. Right, go on, let's, let's chat about um, combat, because this is quite clever. Mm. We mentioned dice earlier. It, it's dice-based. It's dice-based. I, ha I hate combat. Right. There are six different types of dice. You've got four types of attack dice, which are red, yellow, green, and blue. And then there are two types of defense dice, which are black and white. They've got symbols on them. They have symbols on them. And numbers. Uh, and numbers, yes. Okay, so, uh, in multiple different combinations. Some dice have more... Uh, well, okay, the, okay there, are three, there are three basic symbols on the attack dice. There is a number. There is um, a, a hit symbol. And there is a lightning bolt, which is a which is called a surge. Okay, um, your characters will all have special abilities, which um, can be activated by uh, using a surge, uh, one or more surge um, surge symbols, which you can roll on your dice. Really cleverly, the way it works is that each of your weapons will have a dice combination that you roll. So, for example, a stormtrooper in the good old E11 blast storm uh, stormtrooper blaster, okay, rolls a um, uh, uh, rolls a green and a blue dice. What you've got is. Of the four dice, so say you, you got so blue is the one that gives you the longest range. Green is kind of medium range. Uh, red, sorry, yellow is 
short range. Uh, red tends to be short range but lots of damage. Yellows give you lots of surges. Greens kind of give you a mix. Okay, so you take the dice of uh, your weapon rolls, you roll those dice. The numbers on the dice is what's called your accuracy. That is how f effectively how far away you can shoot. Okay, so if you happen to roll uh, a three and a two on two dice, that means you can shoot at a target five squares away. So, but but obviously you've chosen your target first before you fire. So potentially, if you've chosen a target that is six squares away, but you only rolled five on your two dice, you've missed because uh, you haven't rolled enough accuracy. Always assuming you don't have some kind of ability that gives you a reroll. Indeed. Okay. There are abilities that give you rerolls. If for if for example you had a surge, some characters uh, either have intrinsic abilities or gain abilities that can turn surge into accuracy. Uh, so for example, um, I think actually it's uh, it's Han Solo's blaster. Yep. For example, one of its uh, one of its surge characteristics gives you plus two accuracy. Okay, which which so in the in the particular instance, if you were farming with with Han Solo's blaster, you would use the surge to give you plus two accuracy, which meant which means you would turn a miss into a hit. Okay. Then you have the hits themselves. These are that is effectively the amount of damage you've done. Okay, so so you've got your accuracy. You've got surges, which trigger special abilities on 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 either the weapon or the character. Uh, and then you have the physical number of hits that you do. So there are the four attack dice. Then you have the defense dice. Mr. Whittaker. Yeah. Um, basically, defense dice have a slightly different set of symbols on them. And effectively, your defense dice can take, take, take dice off. Um, there's an evade symbol which cancels a surge there is on the white dice there is a a dodge symbol uh, if that turns up you missed sorry yes uh yeah uh, apparently apparently there are two white dice in the game are there yes there are there is one white dice that has the dodge symbol on it there is the white dice that i roll that doesn't appear to have a dodge symbol on it <laughs> oh, really <laughs> i'm sure i just thought i'd like to point that out okay All right, sure fair enough. If you looked for it, you know, carefully. Moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially, the, 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 you you um, take the number of damage icons on the attacker's dice, you take away the number of block icons on the defender's dice, that's the number of hits you've done, uh, plus there are surges on the attacker's dice which allow you to trigger abilities, which quite often are things like add more damage, add more range, add an extra dice of this colour, um, then your defender has evade, which cancels surges before they happen, and there's dodge, and that's pretty much it, really, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. It's a sort of take the dice, hit, hit, roll, roll, roll a dice for attacker, attacker and defender, interpret, and apply result. Yeah. Rather interestingly, it looks like that's a very similar dice mechanic to what they're using with Star Wars Legion. Doesn't surprise I, I me. Wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. Except for the range bit, yeah. so, I, I think, think I but, think the range but, bit is quite pretty. Actually, I like that. Mm. Oh, it, it works incredibly well on the board game. It really does. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, it's a cool mechanic. Yeah. At this point, you may have taken damage. You take your damage tokens. You place them on your hero sheet. When you have run out of health, um, you are exhausted. No, you're not. You are. What's the term? What's the correct Indeed. term. Yes. You are wounded. Yeah, basically, and you turn the card over, and you have crappier stats. Yeah, essentially. And you usually, and you usually use lose one of your yes, abilities, or possibly even some of your attack dice. 
Yes. Uh, so generally, you tend to move slower. Defeated is the technical term. When a figure has suffered damage ah, okay. to its health, it is defeated. That's the term I was looking for. When a hero is defeated, he becomes wounded. When any other figure is defeated, it's removed from the from the map. Equality for Imperial forces, I say. <laughs> Um, no, there's, there's more of them. But the subtlety with, there, the, the subtlety with many that more is that if a complete Imperial group is deple- de- defeated, you can have the deployment card back into your hand. Yeah. It means that uh, basically that, that classic never-ending supply of stormtroopers can potentially be a never-ending supply of st- stormtroopers um, when you get a chance to reactivate them. Basic, basically, yeah. So the, 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 there's a wounded side to all the heroes' character sheets. So for example, your endurance drops from five to four for one of them. Your speed drops from four to three. Various of your the dice you do damage with drops, and you lose an ability. Um, so the and certainly for the introductory scenario, as soon as, if, as soon as you get n heroes wounded, you lose. Yeah. But, yeah. So, yeah, 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 it's... yeah, yeah. It, yeah. In, in, in an awful lot of scenarios, the imperial, uh, well, the scenarios that I've seen so far uh, from the few we've played, one of the imperial players' objectives is to wound the yeah. players. Like he wins. Like for example, we're playing a two-player game. He win. He wins if if he wounds both yeah. players. Sorry, a three-player yeah. game. Exactly. So, um, so that sort of covers the basic rules of of how the, the turn works. As you say, we, we've got scenarios. So you've got objectives to carry out in a set period of time. You go off and you go off and do it. There's quite, always... often, quite often the scenarios have when this happens, trigger this condition, which yes. may be more Imperials turn up, um, this door opens, etc., etc., etc. So there's a certain degree of sort of programmed nature in the scenarios. There, there is more to it, you know, because... You've got lots of different um, conditions that players can have, like bleeding, they be stunned, focus, all sorts of things like that. But you know, we just want to give you a, a rough view. Yeah, of and it, it also has it also has that what's a very popular thing, this idea that that characters and weapons can have keywords. Yes. In the same way that, for example, Sherman's in I mean shot by Ronson, and Stug's a low profile. There are keywords like. Um, like um, blast, cleave, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, um, and, and, and cleave on a ooh, ooh. So yeah, and, and essentially all those. There's a little, usually a description on the card. Or there's a description in the rules reference. So it's one of these. It's quite nice from that point of view. That you can, as long as you actually read the card for the hero you've been given and the weapons you may or may not have picked up, um, it's to some extent sort of self-teaching. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right, so let's chat about the campaign because I think the campaign is key to this game. Oh yeah, so. yeah. So in the core game, there is a I think it's an eight game campaign, but between each game you have these secondary scenarios that you can decide to play, which side, side missions, missions, yeah. yeah. Which means you can basically stretch out a campaign to about 16, 16 games, yeah. or thereabouts. Plus the fact uh, you can also have a, a third type of mission, and uh, this got this boils back. This goes back to what Mike was, uh, so, uh, what Mister Hobbs was saying earlier about the Imperial player gaining experience. They can draw a, type, a, a, a third type of mission called a forced mission, which means that. They can, uh, he can force the players to complete another mission before they get to level up. Nasty. Mm. Sorry about that. Okay. Carry on. Well, that's it. So, I mean, we can't really go into the campaign that much because we don't want to add any spoilers. Spoilers. But the you know it 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 feeds you down a a route, shall we say? And um, there's so much replayability in the game because. Your characters can gain experience from doing side missions, um, or the, if if they lose a campaign game, because the M, the Imperial player will force them to do a force mission, which gives him more abilities, more experience, more more access to different sort of units. 
you've got allies that you can bring in. So, for example, when you play one of the side missions, you may play with, with Luke. You may be trying to do a mission to save Luke from somewhere. And if you do that, you can then use Luke in your next campaign game as, as, a, as an extra character. So it's got lots and lots of stuff like that in it. Or well, finally that, you may find yourself in a situation where you get Han horribly killed by stormtroopers. Oh, that happens. Not that no, bitter. That happens all the time. He didn't shoot first. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, anyway, one of sorry. the things you get in the campaign are resources. So you get experience points. So heroes and imperial players can earn experience points. They can be used to, to buy stuff. Because each, each character has what's called the uh, player's class deck, which gives them access to specific equipment and weaponry that they can use. So you use your experience points to get access to that. You can earn credits. Um, so he was can, can earn credits from you know going through various um, chests and things. So that can purchase new weapons, armor, equipment, and all sort of stuff. And then there's influence, which is the Imperial player's sort of add-on. And that gives the Imperial player access to agenda cards. So these agenda cards, again, they, they give access to powerful characters or extra extra in-game components, I suppose you best way to put it. The, the, the Imperial player can sort of drop in during the campaign. So it, it grows nicely. It's not just a case of play a game and then play another game. You, you've got this little bit of bookkeeping to do between games. You're keeping a track of your player's experience. You're trying to work out what you need to buy, what you need for the next, you know, for the next scenario. It all builds and builds and builds. Oh, actually, on that point, I will put a link in the show notes to this. Uh, one guy on Board Game Geek um, has... I don't know how long it's taken him, but he has put together a spreadsheet for tracking campaigns in in Imperial Assault, and it includes all the expansions and everything. And it is awesome. We're actually using that um, for our campaign. Mr. Hitman found it, as I said. I, th- I think it, it's it's freely available to download on on Board Game Geek. But if if you happen to, you know, if you're one of these people who likes using things like spreadsheets and stuff to keep track of, then it is brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant, and I'll put a, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. I'm sorry, I can't remember who produced it, but I will I will credit it in the show notes. It is well worth getting hold of because it is really really useful. It is it is good. Anything else we want to cover on the campaign game? Yeah. Uh, just a couple of things. It's almost like a pyramid campaign, isn't it? Just from the the main box set, you go to different missions, whether you win or whether you lose the previous one. The side missions are kind of randomly drawn. You get a choice of two. Um, and then obviously you get these force missions popping up from time to time. The upshot of that is that no two campaigns are ever are, are ever likely to be the same. Because your side missions that you choose, maybe the main missions that you choose, certainly whether you get any force missions, because of, let's say, the, the myriad of changes, and this is just in the base game, there is a huge amount of replayability just in playing the campaign from the base game with the amount of scenarios you've got to play around with and what order they're played in, obviously, the replayability you're playing with different heroes potentially getting uh, different abilities. For example, the other thing to mention is the fact that we're talking about people buying stuff. You don't get a choice of everything. At the end of your mission, you will have a certain number of credits and and, uh, the Overlord will say, right, okay, this is what's available, and he will give you six cards. Dealt from um, yeah, you know, dealt from a deck to say, okay, this is what these are the upgrade cards that are are available after after this particular game. You've got six to choose from. It may be a case of you can't afford some, uh, or it may, and sometimes it may be a case of you turn around and say, well, in that case, then what we'll do, we'll put our money together and 
and uh, this person can have all the money because he has yeah, to give him a really a really good weapon, and then we'll you know hopefully match it up a, a bit further on down the campaign. But as I say, all that stuff. It's it's all random factor on random factor on random factor, which just add, which just adds to adds to the replayability of it all. And we are big fans of replay value. Indeed. And then, of course, when you've run out of the box set, what are we up to now? Wave ten. Yes. Okay. So the other thing is is that um, in the base game, uh, okay, so several models turn up from time to time. These may, uh, you know, we've already talked about. You could be, you know, res- uh, rescuing Han or or trying to uh, get a mission to help out uh, Luke Skywalker. Uh, the Imperial player might have a uh, might have something turn up at some point, and that the models aren't in the base game. So in the base game, you have counters for these models. Okay, so it's just a, it's just a card, it's just a round card counter or an oblong card counter and stuff with some artwork on denoting who it is. Okay, so that's what happens in the base game. Yeah. Okay, skirmish games. So there's a second way of mm. playing the game, which is skirmishes. It's, it's it's sort of a cut down version of the campaign game, but instead of playing one or two characters, you're playing a few more. You'd be playing, you know, four or five or even six, or possibly even more than that in the skirmish. And so it, it's more of a, a small, I was going to say skirmish game, but it is, <laughs> you know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Funny that. <laughs> so it, it's been sort of cut down. So you're not using the full player cards that you have in the campaign game. You have a small card for each, each character, which lists. A couple of abilities, and it, it it uses the same rules for for combat and for movement and so forth. There's the same sort of uh, odd turns activation as well. And I mean, it's probably not worth going too much into it, but it it uses a cut down version of the of the game. You have command cards that you can use, which give you um, abilities and things that you can do during your turn. So it's got a bit of hand management in there. But it's essentially, it's you, you're playing five or six figures versus five or six figures in a, a, a smaller sort of board area to complete one objective. And they've got, again, in the core game, you've got skirmish missions, which are uh, card-based skirmish missions, which show you the map to play and tell you what forces you, you're going to use. But it's it's a nice way of sort of killing an hour or so and it uses everything that you've got in the core game. But what happens when you run out of things to do in the core game? Are you going by something else, Neil? It's a silly thing to say. Well, we're, we're up to wave 10, so of expansions and, and extra allies and figures. So essentially, your core set comes with a bunch of... What's the word I'm looking for here? Um, heroes and allies that are not obviously from the movies. Um, they then released Wave 1, which came with Chewie, Han Solo, a bunch of Rebel Troopers, General Vice, a droid, and a few other things. Wave 2, first expansion, at which which was Twin Shadows, which gets you into a whole bunch of map segments, more campaign scenarios. A, and that's a... They call it a big box expansion. It's the smaller of the two box sizes big box expansion, basically. <laughs> Twin, Twin Shadows is a half thickness box, basically. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's two types of things. You have got the allies and villains packs, first of all, yep. which are what one mm. one figure or maybe a group of three figures, like your, your rebel troopers or some more stormtroopers. What you find with each of those packs, they're about ten pounds each on average, ten fifteen pounds. And variously in and out of print. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Grab them when you can. Yeah, if you, so, see, if you see one you've been lusting after, don't wait. Yeah, just buy it. So you get in those boxes, you get two skirmish missions, both use the same map. You get a campaign side mission, uh, which you can... Which is usually in. tied into that particular figure. Yeah, exactly. So your your hand solo one will be a something to do with getting hold of hand, doing something to help hand. Yeah, and then you get a couple of extra cards that you can use in the action decks and things like that. So it's not just buying a box with a figure in it. You've got extra stuff that you can 
you to expand the game. As if your collection of cards didn't wasn't large enough already. Yeah. And then there's the five expansions. Yep. The five. The, the We've five sort of alternated small box, large box, small box, large box. Yeah. Large box? Large box. Large box. Large box. So we've got Twin Shadows, which is um blanking on where that one's set. One of the maps is one of the a lot of the maps for that are on, on an Imperial Star Destroyer, aren't they? Uh no, it's uh, Tatooine. Twin Shadows. And Tatooine. I thought I thought Twin Shadows also had some Star Destroyer bits. Um, mm-hmm. and with that wave you also get LA for LA pack for R two D two and C three PO and uh, villain pack for Boba Fett. And then we move up to wave four. The next the next the next box expansion is actually wave five, and that's Return to Hoth, which is a bigger of the two size scenario boxes, so even more extra bits for your campaign. Yeah, and obviously you start getting stuff related to Hoth, so you get things like uh, you get like the thing. Echo Base Troopers, you get Princess Leia, and then almost immediately after that there came wave six, which had the Bespin Gambit, which is a small big box expansion, and that's got Lando and a bunch of other fun, fun stuff in it. And then there's a wave with Obi Wan and Greedo in it, and then wave eight has Jabba's realm, which is lovely. Which is lovely, mm. and that wave includes Luke, Luke as a Jedi Knight, and Jabba the Hutt, which is a massive figure. It's a fabulous figure. That we'll chat about the miniatures in a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I really want to talk okay. about the miniatures. Yeah, yeah, um, we'll get to those. Um, okay. And then wave nine's more figures. Wave ten is coming out any time now, and that's Heart of the Empire. Now this is this is a bit different, isn't it? Because this one isn't following the sort of trilogy. No, it's Hardly not. Hardly, no. it breaks away from the trilogy a bit and takes you into Coruscant. Yeah, it has Ashoka Tano, Emperor Palpatine, and Darth Maul. Hmm. Interesting. As it as it as its ally and villain packs. It looks like the Darth Maul from the Clone Wars cartoon series. Well, uh, Ahsoka's from there, isn't she? Uh, yes, although she did turn up in... She was in uh, Revenge of the Sith, wasn't she? Because yeah, she was killed but, in Revenge uh, of the Sith, but... Uh... And mysteriously resurrected in the Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, but Clone Wars was before Revenge of the Sith, wasn't That's it? That's true, yes. So, um, yeah, but, yeah. But, um, essentially, if you are of, of that kind of said slightly OCD nature that many of us gamers are, are, are this is either when depending on how you look at it, a very good or a very bad game, in that <laughs> it's very good for your ability to collect things and just look at the Chinese on the shelf, and it's very bad for your wallet. Yeah, uh, uh, so, as, so as, as I pointed out earlier, all these all these nice little counters with artwork on that you get in the base game, actually all have miniatures See. that you can buy for them. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Indeed. And some of them are just wow. Right. Okay. So, shall we ask the question? Imperial Assault. What's good about it? My opening gambit would be it's freaking Star Wars. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> that... It's Rogue One in a bloody board game. Yes. Um. Yeah. I'm back to being eleven. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you. For me. Imperial Assault is the Star Wars game to beat all of them because yep. it just it it's small actions, it's small saboteur type actions. It's not the big battles for me. It's exactly what Star Wars is. It's a couple of rebels trying to hit a, an Imperial base or do some damage to the Imperials. Yep. Yeah, and it, as, it as just I, fits that perfectly. Yeah, as, as I think of as the story, I think I've told before. I I walked out of Rogue One with Anna and said, "Imperial Assault. We don't want. We'll um, I, let's let's find someone to take our copy of our order off our hands and buy Imperial Assault because you walk out of Rogue One thinking that's the game. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It really is. It, yeah, there, there's two ways I, I I really want to play Star Wars, and that's either really big fleet battles, like in Armada. Well, Armada didn't work for me, which is why I gave you the box. It, yeah. it, it, well, it's, it's, it's done the rounds, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I effectively traded in for the Star Wars Imperial Assault corset. So, oh, good. Yeah, it, um, Armada. Maybe because um, Halo came out at the same time, and Halo was a big fleet battle game with loads and loads of stuff going on there. Armada just felt like three or four big ships and a couple of small ships. 
it, yeah, it, maybe. it, 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 it didn't give me that that big fleet action that I wanted from you know from um, from the third film. You know, that, that's what I wanted to be playing. Mm. Yeah, the only problem is to get that with Armada. You you you're starting to play on a on a twelve by six table with about the contents of eight boxes. Oh no, it, it'd be a complete different game. Oh no, you play with Armada, but it'd be take forever. Oh god, no! I'd, I'd, I'd rather have a smaller game where, you know, the Star Destroyers were about three or four inches long. You know, yeah. that's, yeah, but, okay, anyway, point. but for cinematic games, Imperial Assault is the way to go. It is, and that's before you start putting the figures, painting the figures, and putting them on the table. I have been late coming to this game. Uh, I, I actually, for, considering how big a Star Wars fan I, I, I am of it, um, I don't own it. Uh, which is a bit of a surprise. Actually, it was one of those games I looked at and and and, and still look at and kind of go. Uh, and it, it is. I mean, it's a fantasy flight money pit. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it just takes shameless advantage of the nature of a number of war gamers I know. It, indeed. I mean, you know, some people will complain and say, "Oh, they're, oh, they're making money hand over fist on it." I mean, let's face it. You know, the Star Wars license is not cheap, uh, but fantasy flight have done awesome, awesome job in putting Star Wars on a board. You know, uh, as I say, I've I, I come to it fairly late. I've only played it in the last few weeks. Uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Hickman, who ha- who, who has had a... Uh, my other mate, Dave, uh, who has had a massive accident uh, with, with, with Imperial Assault. Uh, Even bigger than mine, and mine wasn't small. Uh, uh, he, well, put it this way, he was saying, oh, I don't own all the figures. I don't, I said, oh, I've got loads of them to. I've got loads of figures to. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the separate figure backs. I've got, I've got loads of them to collect. So, okay, so let's go through them then. Okay, so, yeah, I've got that one. Yeah, I've got that one. Yeah, I've got that one. Uh, oh yeah, and that one. Yeah, and that one. Yeah, and that one. Uh, yeah, it turns out, it turns out, he's missing eight of the expansion. Yeah, from every. every were you thing. when when you were a kid? Did you ever have one of the collectible football card games and go through yours or a mate's collection, going got got not got got. Got not got yeah. Imperial Assault is like that. Yeah, but everything is playable in the game. Yes, the one thing we haven't mentioned, of course, in the fact of in the game, the Imperial player gets okay. It, it's 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 slight. It's a slight. It's slightly small, smaller than it should be. The Imperial player does get a couple of ATSTs. Uh, they're a bit small, as you say. They are a bit smaller than they should be, but they're still blooming imposing. Oh. Oh, oh, they're gorgeous. They're really gorgeous. Thirty-six ally and villain packs. So, so, so you're telling me that Dave owns twenty-eight? Yes, we think. Uh, we think. Sorry. Uh, oh, oh, correction. Not, sorry, not include. Okay, not included. No, he owns twenty-five because we didn't include the the three they've just announced. Three that aren't out that yet. Aren't yeah, out okay, yet. Okay, fair enough. But, it, but and of course, there is nothing to stop you buying multiple packs of the stormtroopers. Indeed not. Indeed not. Because they're blooming nice figures. Yes. Which leads us on back to Mr. Hobbs. Yes. So, uh, so yes, uh, myriad of stuff. And uh, the figures, Mr. Hobbs, because you've painted yours, haven't you? I've painted the vast majority of them, yeah. I've, I've done all the ones in the core box. Ooh. And quite a few of the expansion of the Allied packs as well. Yeah, they, they paint up a treat. They're semi-hard plastic. They're all assembled, other than the... Uh, ATST, which you have to... And the ATST, the only drawback with the ATST is it's a little stiff to put together in a couple of places. Yes, it can be a little... Getting the gun on is a little bit of a... Yes. Yes. But, yeah, they, they paint up... Uh, they're really nice. I mean, probably the weakest figure in the whole lot is, is the Luke figure. He's a little bit soft, but the rest of them are fantastic. Oh, and The Han the hands Solo is just wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I I put mine on to, uh, or the vast majority of them, I put on to clear bases. That's a nice idea. Oh, right, cool, yeah. Um, there's a few you can't do, you know, like um, uh, Ben and some um, the Imperial, the, the Emperor's Guards, because they got great big long robes. Mm. You know, you really have to hack them off the base, so I didn't bother with those. But majority of them I put on to clear bases, which looks great. And I. I use them in this. I also use them in 7TV. Hmm. And, As you, you know, would. Because uh, that's what you need. <laughs> now, if you want a really good look at what 
you can do with those figures. A, check out Hobbsy's blog, because I'm sure he's got pictures all over the place. Mm. But if you go to Sorastro's painting oh, on YouTube, yes. oh, he yes. has a series, and that should tell you everything you need to know. He has a series where he's basically gone through, and he has painted just about everything. And one, he's a bleeping good painter. He's done everything in his power to show out, show off how you can make them look good uh, and how good they are to start with. But the other thing is if you want a training course on how to become a better painter, he covers everything. Shading, zenithal lights, um, object-based light sourcing, the works. It's just watch them and draw and learn. He also has a Patreon campaign, and he's worth backing on that. Oh, yeah. And if you look at, I mean, for example, um, I'll try and mute the sound so it doesn't immediately leap into life. The at, his, his job on the Atsu is just fabulous. It's got all sort of oily around the exhaust ports and, 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 and so on and so forth, and rusty, rusty and muddy around the feet. And it's just absolutely brilliant. He also lists all the paints he uses. And goes into yeah okay so after the first two or three he says and we'll prime it like we did the did the first few and he's just building on techniques one after another uh, I mean the job he did on the rancor is just brilliant yeah uh, I, just... I've learned a lot of stuff from him I mean you get to about halfway through and you look at the figure at halfway through and think dang that looks good and then the next half of the video you just sit in there going oh that's awesome. I didn't even think of doing that. And he's just, I mean, the, if you look at, for example, looking at the Ranker, if you look about halfway through, the claws look, oh, the claws look okay. And then he starts adding shading and grunge and dirt. And he's just, wow. Rave, enthuse. Watch these videos by Imperial Assault <laughs> paint the figures. Learn. It's brilliant. So, do we like it, then? I, I, I was going to say, is there anything bad about it? There are a few places in the introductory guide where Dave Brown and I, who played, the, who was the person I played the first game with, had to go on a hunt for a couple of rules because the imper- the the get you started guide is not perfectly set out in places. I'd say the only thing, and it's a really tiny niggle, if you don't like games where you have to get loads of tokens out and sort of through lots of different types of cards, but. It's a fantasy flight game, and that's what they do. It is, ultimately, it's you know, it's a dungeon bash, except for fact mm. it's a dungeon bash with a Star Wars theme, uh, as uh, someone would say. Oh, oh, what theme? Yeah, it is great. We, with the fact it's fantasy flight, the the production values are top Super. notch. Some would some would say, what's bad about it? The amount of freaking money it costs. <laughs> um, and uh, the amount that you know, the, the amount that is around, and some would argue some of the problems with availability. Yeah, and the other point I would make is that, from my point of view, the skirmish game does absolutely nothing for me. But that's mostly because it's designed as a tournament game, and in general, tournament games do absolutely nothing for me. See, that is that is interesting because they do, yeah, as they they do play this as a tournament. It is, yeah. it is exclusively the skirmish game when the players tournament. Yeah, the, I mean the interesting. I mean one of the interesting things I, 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 is, uh, you know, in in the in the myriad of expansions and accessories you can put, you can purchase for this game, is they actually, uh, it's fantasy flight actually produce gaming mats um, of several of the uh, of several of the skirmish setups. Yeah, so you can just so rather than hunting through the box. For all those, um, for all those tiles, you can just, you can just, you, you can just spend a bit of money and lay out a gaming mat, and it's there. Slap down, slap down the skirmish mat, and jump off your yeah. Off you go. Skirmish. I mean, the skirmish mode is quite nice. It's, it's, it's quick and easy. If there's only two of you, then it's a great way of playing the game. Because mm. I, I, I think the campaign game works best with three or four players. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. That said, yeah. part of the thing about the campaign game, it's the freaking Star Wars universe. I want story. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're playing it three player. So we have one person playing the Imperial, two heroes. And what we've done, we've got, uh, we, we are only running one hero each. Now, when you do that, there is a game balancing mechanic that they use. Uh, which basically means that the heroes get uh, something, uh, get an extra card called Legendary, which basically means that you get an extra 10 hit points uh, and you get an extra action. So the heroes can take two actions a turn rather than uh, two actions a turn rather than just one. Okay. Oh, three. Hmm? three instead of two. Three instead of two. Yeah. No. You always get two actions. No, sorry. Sorry, you get two activations. Sorry. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get two activations a turn rather than one. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. However, so that's so they use that as a balancing mechanic in, in when you're playing a three-player game. However, I mean it's like as we, uh, I mean the uh, the scenario. I mean no spoilers. Uh, so I won't say what it was, but but certainly the scenario we played on um, start of the week on Monday night, it would have helped to have. More players with le- who who had less health between them, a because you have more targets, uh, and b because you know w- w- there are some scenarios where you have to be in multiple places at once. So so actually, whilst there are balances in the two player game, in this sorry in the three player game, I think uh, from what I've se- from my limited experience of what I've seen, I think you're right in the fact I think I think it will work best with four or five players, i.e. so you have either three or four Rebel players. Yeah. Or, I, or you I, play I two, you two each. Yeah, I, I would do that. I mean, that, that's how we play when there's three of us. We, we take two characters each, and that works. that works fine. Now, one last interesting thing to note. So we've been talking about the fact that, okay, you have one person playing the Imperials. And it's only, uh, and so you have to have it as, as a two player game. Now, Fantasy Flight have, uh, been pushing the, uh, pushing the boundaries of, uh, how you play board games and especially starting it with the use of mobile apps. Uh, and they have produced several games where they have apps, uh, as, as an integral part of the game. Uh, one of which was the second edition of Mansions of Madness. Where okay, so the first edition was similar to start to something like Star Wars, as you said, for example, where you, you you know you have one person playing the Overlord and everybody else plays the heroes. And then in the second edition, uh, they released the game and it comes with an app, and the app effectively plays the games master. People played this, and they came back to them to Fantasy Flight and said, "Can we have this?" For Imperial Assault. <laughs> now at Gen Con last year, they turned around and said, "Yes, we're doing it." At Gen Con this year, they turned around and went, "We're still doing it. It's just taking us a bit longer to develop it than what we thought, because the AI is actually more complicated." in Imperial Assault than it is in Mansions of Badness. But the upshot is they are working on an app f- uh, for Imperial Assault so that no one has to... So the app will play the Imperial player, which means that you will be able to play as everybody plays the Rebels or you can play solo. Oh, That'd be good. Or more to the point, if you have two players, you can play two figures, two figures each against the computer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it it, it opens up those it opens up those options. Mm. I mean, we're programmers. We know what this is like. These things are complicated, hard, hard complicated. <laughs> Fantasy Flight are actually very good at doing them. So I mean, you know, uh, I played the mansion. I played Mansions of Madness. It is re- it, it works really well from what I've seen so far. Uh, I've been very impressed with it. So if they do the same good job that they do that with Mansions of Madness for the Imperial Assault one, it will be cool. So, do we like this game then? Oh, yeah. I, I think there's only two things missing from this game. What's that then? One, 
I'd really like to play as some of the heroes. I'd really like to play as Han or Chewie or Luke. Or like that. Oh, uh, oh, as uh, as opposed to they are uh, the only way you can play them is that they uh, yes they are allies as opposed they to join your party. Yeah. TM. Yeah, yeah, I'd really like to play as the, as the heroes. And also, I'd really like to do Rogue One, Rogue One with this. That was going to be my next point. I'm sure that will happen. Yeah. You can kind of see where it's going. I mean, I mean, let's face mm. it, they've just rele- they just happened to release a Rogue One expansion for one of the other Star Wars games, which I'm sure we'll be talking mm-hmm. about in the near future. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got that. I must open it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, I would imagine that, that I wouldn't be surprised if Scarif is the next place they go after Coruscant. They've been around the original trilogy. They've gone to Coruscant. Has it been to Endor yet? Yeah? Well, that's, that's, that's for the good. You bloody Ewoks. <laughs> <laughs> now, oh, well, okay, so we've just discovered one expansion that Mr. Hobbs will not be buying for Imperial Assault. Yes, he will. He'll just enjoy playing the Imperials for that one. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely buy that just just to get the uh, jet bags. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, yes, it, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yes, good, yeah, yeah good, good point. So, okay, so so we've got what well, is effectively, you know, a Star Wars miniatures game which you can play, uh, you know, in campaign mode. Uh, it's got so much to it uh, as far as you know the, the replayability and, and missions and various other bits and pieces. You can play skirmishes. And then they go and announce Star Wars Legions as a miniatures game. And you kind of go, I thought we had that. I thought we had that with Imperial Assault. It will be really interesting to see how they do it. Because, because I mean, as you say, Mr. Hobbs, you always think, you know, your vision is, okay, it's, it's, it's a small group of, yeah, Star Wars is a small group fighting against and, and uh, performing covert missions against the Imperium. Um, Let's face it, that's why Star Wars the RPG worked. And we're looking at, and now we're, uh, and with Legion, you know, we're looking at, oh, uh, it's kind of, you know, we're expanding it a bit uh, to uh, what well, is effectively a warband skirmish game. Mm. In, it will be interesting, to, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm certainly getting Legions. I'm certainly getting Legions. Uh, but it will be interesting to see how that, just how it differs, and uh, from uh, Imperial Assault. But having played it, having played it myself, I'm kind of going. So why didn't I buy this game? Yeah. Uh, I, I despite the fact that a very a very good friend of mine owns it uh, and owns an awful lot of it. I'm still tempted to go, oh, you know what? I really fancy it. But, you know, do mm. I really you know, do I really want to disappear down that particular rabbit hole? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but it is good. Mm. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Shall we have a quick break? Oh and Star Wars uh, it Star Wars Imperial Assault. Star Wars Imperial Assault. And oh where do you buy it? Uh, everywhere, everywhere. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Online, friendly local game store. Everybody's got it. It's f- funny enough. It's quite popular. Strange that Star Wars. Hi folks, well, it's finally happened. I've got round to sorting out the results of the caption competition that we, that we ran in September. Oh, yeah, August, September. Uh, here we are. It's, uh, it's only, yeah, it's, yeah. It's only a few weeks later. Sorry. Right, so thank you to everybody who responded. It obviously caught people's imaginations. If you haven't read. <laughs> The uh, uh, the posting editorial I po- uh, yeah I, I did about the, all the entries uh, please do so uh, yes um, disturbingly uh, some people got very much into my brain or have been looking at uh, my own particular painting desk 
and it was incredibly difficult to decide uh, on a winner. In the end, what I decided to do was I went through and um, everything that gave me uh, a real belly laugh or I thought was clever, uh, I put into a shortlist and then I randomised uh, from that shortlist. Uh, so there, there, there were too many really good ones to uh, just decide on just one, you know, straight off. Uh, so I hope you appreciate uh, that in the end uh, I just had to yeah, shortlist it and then do a, a, a random selection from there. So the two winners of the caption competition are Mark Jessup and John Sharman. Well done guys. Uh, thank you very much to everybody for entering. Now, Mark and John, uh, if you want to contact me, uh, there are two sets of rules up for grabs. The, uh, there are a Wild West set and a Napoleonic Skirmish set. Okay, these are the Fistful of Lead rules that I reviewed on the blog back in July. If you want to email me with your preference, Hopefully, I can be accommodating to you both. But if you both want the same one, then, uh, uh, yeah. Let's talk. <laughs> okay, so email me and we'll go from there, guys. Okay, thank you to everybody again for entering and uh, all, your, all your incredibly creative efforts. And if you've been following Twitter, you'll know that... Uh, Due to a particular photo being posted recently, we will be running another caption competition very shortly. We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. If you are, would you like to support us? There's a couple of ways of doing so. You can become a patron of the show by supporting us on our Patreon page. There you can give regularly every time we produce a show. Alternatively, you may want to give a one-off donation, and you can do that by using PayPal. For more details on both these options, please click on the Donate tab on our website, www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk. Did anyone get the impression that we like that game? Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit. It is good. <sighs> There's not many games that we actually all three of us own and rave over. Except for the fact that I don't... I, 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 yeah, I only, I only own that by proxy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate, but it still counts. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, you hear that, Dave? Yeah, it's, it, it's would, true. It, would, yeah. it would count even more if it was Luffy, because the pair of you are practically married, so Dungeon Saga definitely <laughs> counts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for that. I yeah. just thought of something. Go on, before, before we finish up, we didn't um, chat about my Mr. Whitaker board this week, did we? Oh, what? gosh, no, we didn't. Oh, no, we didn't. Like, no, shall, we didn't. We, shall, we, shall, we, shall we have a quick word about that? We teased yeah. it. We teased it. We never did. Yeah. <laughs> So, so here am I sitting, minding my own bleeping business on on Twitter. Did with, you get a, with, you know, did you get a drive by? You know, I got a random drive by Hobbsying. You're welcome. The fair and wonderful Annie Norman has a new. Um, range of figures that she's currently taking pre-orders for, and oh dear lord, they're nice. Um, they are the ladies of the home front. What do you expect from Annie? You know. Um, so we have three different packs of women's land army. Um, one one set at work with um, assorted tools. One set with shotguns, and one set having a picnic. Cause why not? Uh, we have two lots of home defence, women's home defence. Again, there's five figures in a pack. 
one set are unarmed. One, one, one of the ladies has binoculars and he's clearly doing some spotting, that kind of thing. The other lot are armed with um, a interesting range of improvised pointy things. <laughs> I think it's about the best description, isn't it? Did, did you um, recognise the Zulu spear? I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bought him from fighting the fuzzy wuzzies, don't you know? Yes. yes. Um, there's a there's a British field little lovely little vignette and British field medics pack, um, and then you can get various things as a bundle. They are sculpted by help Alamarsh, yes, and they're very very characterful. And for those of us who have uh, a whole bunch of foundry home guard um, and 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 need some more forces for our Operation Sea Lion chain of command games, they're just how could I not? I don't know, is he is that the same guy who did the who who did the female Russians? Yes, it is. I do it believe is. so. Yeah, he's a very good sculptor. But oh my, they're nice. You are yeah. in any way um, so the, of... so they're up for pre-order. When are they due to get released? November, I think, aren't they? Yeah, for Crisis. All right, so all right, so they uh, so they're coming out of Crisis. Yeah. yeah. If you play very British Civil War or anything like that, they, they're fantastic sculpts. I, I saw them in the flesh a few weeks ago, and oh, they're yeah, oodles and oodles of character in them, and they're just, beautifully sculpted just, and fantastic. And you're a rat bag. Well, I, I didn't want you to miss that, mate. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's let's have a look at the timing between the tweets, shall we? It didn't take long. Hey, Mike, you know your dad's army needs these reinforcements. Timestamp on that, 2012 on the 2nd October. Me! Um, when I eventually saw it at quarter past 11 the following morning. Oh, you're so right. Make those be in my basket now. 11.19, five minutes later, pre-ordered. Yes, that, that was, as I say, that was as good as the, uh, that was almost as good as the drive-by that, uh, that, that, that Mr. Hobbs did with, did with myself and, and, and my other mate Dave. Which on seventh, that, that was for seventh continent, and uh, not it's, so Mike uh, happened to tweet um, myself and Dave to say, "Oh, oh, oh, have you seen this? Uh, oh, yeah, this was after he backed it. He said, oh, oh, hey guys, have you seen this?' Uh, then there was a a a short uh, a short exchange between three or four people, but essentially discussing uh, who should buy it, who was going to break first. <laughs> Okay, that short discussion over the space of Twitter took about five minutes, during which, during which Mr. Hitman broke. I know. <laughs> so Mr. Hobbs did two drive boys this week, <laughs> not just the one. And of yes, course, uh, you've, and of course you've I... heard a live drive by as well, because he's got me looking at he's got me looking at Seventh Continent. Well, I should point out that he had nothing to do with me buying Seventh Continent. That was Ash and Pippa at the club. Fair enough, but uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, yeah, so I haven't hit the button yet. But depending, it's on... it's only a matter of time. Well, especially if he brings it along on Sunday and uh, and shows me how it works, then you never know. Yeah. Sunday, Saturday, Saturday, yeah. Saturday. But Saturday. yes, those um, those, those figures are lovely. Can I do another drive by to all, to all our listeners? Go on then. Great Escape Games. Now they've recently released a range of. Romanians for World War Two. Ooh. Uh, again, I, um, Stu showed me the figures for those, and I, I think they're um, Alan Marsh as well. Man's busy and prolific, isn't he? Yeah, well, I, I, I think he's been bought um, by, by by Annie and Stu. Look, being, being kept in a hamster cage and, and kept in a guinea pig cage and, and made to sculpt for, for peanuts kind of thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. But yeah, again, those figures, really, really characterful, Lovely sculpts and something different. And if you do in Russia, really, mm. you know, really interesting for that. Mm. So there we go. That's my that's that's my ever drive by. Excellent stuff. Right, are we done then, chaps? I think we are. Good oh. Well, in our case then, all that remains to be said is. Thank you to uh, the gentleman for joining me for this uh, last couple of hours entertainment. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. You're welcome. 
of course, thank you to uh, the Welsh wizard himself. Hello, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Neil. Farewell, meeps. <sighs> Indeed. Uh, yes, thank you for uh, yes, thank you for all your encouragement uh, for for us to spend uh, to, to support with our hard-earned cash. I'm not looking at seven continent. I'm not looking at seven continent. Honestly, yes, you I'm are. not looking. I'm not looking. Uh, don't look at him, mate. Look at Arkham Horror instead. I got Derby coming up this weekend, and it's like I I I originally promised myself I was gonna I, I, um I was gonna get some stuff from Derby, and uh, I'm I'm looking and thinking. Uh, they might have they might have it at uh, Firestorm Games on Saturday. Otherwise, um, I I got um I, I bought a box from Mark because he wanted it, and I got off um, Amazon Prime for thirty one pound. Next day delivery. You're really you not order. helping. You're you really not helping. You could order now, and I have a bite tomorrow. Amazon Prime are fantastic, man. Give me to order for you. Show it to me on. Show it to me on Saturday. Okay. Show it to me on Saturday. Yes. Uh. uh yeah. But I mean, by the time you listen to this, this that will have happened. So, <laughs> so I, I apologise at this point for the fact that this podcast is late. But you know, uh, we're recording this on Wednesday. And, uh, I've got four days, you know, I've got three days of gaming in a show to get through, uh, before we can publish this podcast. So, <laughs> apologies again. Usual uh, excuse then. Usual excuse. Far too busy gaming. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a good excuse though. Uh, as some, uh, as, as some have already tweeted, the very best excuse to have. So, thank you one and all for, for, for sharing your comments, for sharing your review. All that to be said is thank you one and all for listening. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Take care until next time. Happy gaming. Roll good dice. And we'll speak to you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, why not share it with others by leaving us a review on iTunes? And if you have any comments or questions, you can always email the show. The address is info at meeplesandminiatures.co.uk And you can also visit our webpage, where you'll find a complete episode archive, all the View from the Veranda podcasts, rules reviews, and our blog of hobby items and news, which is updated several times a week. This is also where you'll find the links to our presence on social media. And here you can follow us on Twitter or join our Facebook group. And finally, here you can also find details should you wish to support us by making a donation to the podcast. All this on the Meeples and Miniatures website, www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk. The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.